Though we may get a bit bent from time to time, we shall never be beaten. April 1977. The Soviet Navy is conducting Exercise Sever 77 in the Barents Sea to practice both anti-submarine warfare and replenishment with tanker ships at sea. The exercise is centered around the Soviet Navy's newest aircraft carrier, Kiev. The lead ship of her class, Kiev was commissioned less than two years previous. The first ever fixed-wing aircraft carrier to be operated by the Soviets, Kiev operates the Yak-38, NATO reporting name, Forger. The Forger is the Soviet Navy's vertical takeoff and landing fighter jet, itself less than 10 years old. Although designed to operate with a wing of up to 22 Forgers, Kiev only operates with a dozen, as well as a dozen or so KA-28 anti-submarine warfare helicopters, NATO reporting name, Hormone. Kiev also had a distinguishing feature that differentiated it from other, more conventional aircraft carriers. On most carriers, the ship's entire deck, from bow to stern, was utilized as a flight deck. However, what made Kiev different was that her flight deck only extended as far as her superstructure. From the superstructure to the bow, the deck contained an array of missile launchers and guns, so that her front half resembled that of a guided missile cruiser and the back half resembling that of an aircraft carrier. Her armament included four twin P-500 Basalt surface-to-air missile launchers, two twin M-11 Storm surface-to-air missile launchers, two twin 4K-33 OSAM surface-to-air missile launchers, as well as two 76mm twin guns, and eight CIWS rotary cannons, along with four anti-submarine rocket and missile launchers. Kiev also contained an array of sonar equipment, with hull-mounted horse-jaw low-frequency and bull-nose medium-frequency sonar, as well as a mare-tail variable depth sonar. The hull-mounted sonar would scan the area around and in front of the ship, but left a blind spot in the area behind the ship, which was covered by the variable depth sonar, or VDS. Kiev also boasted a faster speed than most submarines at the time. Kiev, being the Soviet Union's first fixed-wing aircraft carrier, naturally attracted a fair amount of attention from the West. However, NATO, the Soviet Union's main opponent, had a problem. Kiev was the first ship of her class, and thus, NATO did not have her acoustic signature. You see, every ship emits noise, with a combination of onboard machinery, propellers, and the hull traveling through the water, combining to form a unique acoustic signature, which can be used to detect, locate, and identify the ship with sonar. If a submarine possessed the acoustic signature of a given ship, it could identify and locate it without ever seeing it, giving the submarine a valuable advantage. But without Kiev's acoustic signature, NATO submarines would not be able to identify her without making themselves vulnerable to her sonar array. However, Kiev usually sailed with escorts, meaning that the ship tasked with the mission would need to get very close to Kiev for an extended period of time to fully gather her acoustic profile. In 1977, it was decided that the British Royal Navy's newest submarine, HMS Swiftsure, would be sent to gather this information. As Sever 77 was underway in the Barents Sea near Norway, Swiftsure found the large group of ships from the Soviet Navy's northern fleet after being at sea for over a month. As expected, Kiev was not alone. She was escorted by three Soviet Project 1134A Berkut A guided missile cruisers, Marshal Timoshenko, Admiral Nakamov, and Admiral Izakov, as well as the Project 61 Kashin destroyer whose name I will not even try to pronounce. The area was alive, with missiles, guns, and torpedoes all being fired as part of the naval exercise. Swiftsure's captain, Captain John Speller, knew that the only way to approach Kiev was from behind, in the blind spot for the hull-mounted sonar. Normally, submarines can hide in deeper, colder water, below what's called a thermocline, where warm and cold water meet, and where the hull-mounted sonar has more difficulty reaching. However, because Swiftsher needed to isolate the acoustic signature of Kiev, she had to get close. Speller knew that the VDS could detect submarines below the thermocline, but was not as effective as a towed array, which could detect deeper and more effectively. It was also a possibility that the VDS wasn't even deployed, or wasn't being used, and so it was decided that Swiftsher would approach Kiev slowly from behind, before shadowing directly underneath her to gather the necessary information. Swiftsher made a slow approach behind Kiev, avoiding detection from both the carrier and her escorts. Swiftsher took hours approaching the carrier, the crew adjusting the propeller speed by one or two revolutions at a time in order to avoid detection, 
being careful to follow the exact course of the Kiev. Finally, Swiftsher slipped under the 40,000 ton Soviet carrier and matched the giant's speed. She then raised her periscope, which was a mere 10 feet under Kiev's spinning propellers. As Swiftsher's acoustic equipment went to work gathering data on the carrier, her cameras took these photos of the propellers and underside of Kiev, showing just how close the Royal Navy submarine came to the Russian carrier. Swiftsure's entire crew had to be incredibly focused, knowing that just one mistake could lead to disaster. If Kiev changed course and Swiftsure didn't, her cover could be blown. Or, even worse, the two ships could collide. One of Swiftsure's crew members later recalled, We are in a submarine that could actually sink him in three minutes. He would have difficulty sinking us. That's the sort of arrogant bit of knowledge to tuck away. We know he's there and we're controlling this whole evolution, and he doesn't know we're there. Swiftsure remained 10 feet under Kiev for several hours before slipping back into the depths, having acquired invaluable data on the Soviet Navy's newest carrier. Swiftsure returned to port after her mission, which had taken her 70 days to complete. She returned with Kiev's full acoustic signature, meaning Britain would be able to detect her before she ever got close enough to strike in the event of a war. Luckily for everyone involved, such a war never took place. Kiev was retired in 1993 after service with both the Soviet and Russian navies. She was sold to a company in China where she sits today being used as a hotel. HMS Swiftsure was prematurely retired in 1992 due to issues with her nuclear reactor. She is currently awaiting dismantling at Rosyth in Scotland, along with the rest of the ships in her class, which were all retired over 10 years later. Of course, there have been questions raised about this mission since it was declassified. Some people claim that the mission actually never happened, as they say it would have been impossible for a NATO submarine to get that close to a Russian carrier, especially during the Cold War. Others claim that the Swiftsure did take those photos, but it took it while the Kiev was at anchor off of Cairo. However, multiple veteran accounts from aboard the Swiftsure seem to affirm that the event did take place as described in this video. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing and also check out my Patreon where you can get exclusive access to behind the scenes content, early releases, and more. You can also join the Historically Discord server. The link for both the Patreon and the Discord will be in the description. And, as always, thank you so much for your continued support.